We evolved to store energy and the genes that allowed us to survive on the planet as a species are now counterproductive to our health because we're in a totally new environment, killing us uh, and causing an enormous amount of our, our uh, uh, financial resources to be thrown into managing chronic diseases, all most of which are caused by a diet and uh, minimal exercise uh, and, and, and consumption. Did you know that some of your favorite foods might be feeding cancer cells in your body? From fried chicken to instant noodles, we're about to uncover the eight worst foods for cancer prevention, according to Dr. Thomas Seyfried's research. Get ready to rethink your meal choices. But first, meet Dr. Seyfried, a prominent researcher in the field of cancer metabolism, proposes that cancer is primarily a mitochondrial metabolic disease rather than a genetic one. His groundbreaking work suggests that certain foods can significantly impact cancer cell growth and progression. In this video, we'll explore the eight worst foods that may be feeding cancer cells in your body. Understanding this information is crucial for making informed dietary choices that could potentially reduce your cancer risk. Remember, Small changes in your daily diet can have a profound impact on your long-term health. Before we begin, it's important to note that this video is for educational purposes only and should not replace professional medical advice. Always consult with a qualified healthcare professional before making significant changes to your diet or health regimen. Which is the sugar glucose and the amino acid glutamine. They are the two major fuels that we have found driving all cancers, making cancer a singular disease of energy metabolism. Now that we've set the stage, let's unwrap the truth about a common culprit in our diets, candy. You might think of it as a harmless treat, but research suggests it could be feeding more than just your sweet tooth. According to Dr. Thomas Seyfried's research, excessive sugar consumption promotes inflammation and weight gain, both of which are risk factors for cancer. While sugar itself isn't a carcinogen, the elevated glucose levels from overconsumption can contribute to systemic inflammation, potentially damaging cellular mitochondria and paving the way for cancer development. But it's not just about inflammation. Candy provides what nutritionists call empty calories, calories with no nutritional value. These empty calories can lead to weight gain, and as Irma Levy, a research dietitian, points out, sugar feeds every cell in our body, even cancer cells. The weight gain resulting from high sugar intake is associated with increased risks of several cancers, including breast, colorectal, and pancreatic cancers. So, how much sugar is too much? The American Heart Association recommends no more than six teaspoons of sugar per day for women and nine for men. Yet, most Americans consume more than double this amount daily. To satisfy your sweet cravings without the cancer risk, consider healthier alternatives. Opt for natural sugars like molasses, agave nectar, honey, or maple syrup, which are packed with protective antioxidants. You could also try adding spices like nutmeg, ginger, or cinnamon to your foods, or use fresh or dried fruit as a natural sweetener. They are the two major fuels that we have found driving all cancers, making cancer a singular disease of energy metabolism. From sweet treats, we move to a savory staple that might be doing more harm than good. The All-American Hamburger, a beloved comfort food, has been under scrutiny for its potential role in cancer development. Research has shown that processed and red meats, including hamburgers, are associated with an increased risk of colorectal cancer. The National Cancer Institute warns, when meat is cooked at high temperatures, substances are formed that may cause cancer. These substances, known as heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, are particularly prevalent in well-done or charred meats. The cooking method plays a crucial role in the formation of these compounds. Grilling or flame broiling hamburgers can lead to higher concentrations of HCAs and PAHs. While animal studies have shown these chemicals can cause cancer, it's important to note that the doses used were much higher than what a person would typically consume. To reduce potential risks, consider alternative cooking methods or adjustments to your grilling technique. Marinating meat in herbs and spices or grilling on tinfoil can help minimize direct exposure to high heat. Additionally, maintaining a healthy weight and engaging in regular physical activity are essential, as studies have linked higher body mass index and lower physical activity levels to increased colorectal cancer risk. In these aboriginal tribes of people who live according to their traditional ways, 
which was no high carbohydrate foods, a lot of exercise, your mitochondria are maintained in a super energy state, and cancer does not exist. From burgers, we move to another staple that might be quietly contributing to cancer risk, white bread. This seemingly innocent slice could be more harmful than you think. White bread, a common household item, has been linked to increased cancer risk due to its high glycemic index. According to a study published in Nutrients, which examined data from over 118,000 participants, white bread intake was associated with a higher risk for colorectal cancer. The reason? Refined carbohydrates in white bread can lead to rapid spikes in blood sugar and insulin levels. Dr. Thomas Seyfried explains that these spikes create an environment that promotes cancer cell growth. He emphasizes that processed carbohydrate foods, like white bread, contribute to cancer by altering cellular energy metabolism, making cells more susceptible to cancerous transformations. Moreover, white bread lacks the fiber, vitamins and minerals found in whole grain alternatives. The National Cancer Institute states that high intake of refined carbohydrates is linked with an increased cancer risk due to its promotion of obesity and chronic inflammation, both known risk factors for cancer. To reduce these risks, consider switching to whole grain alternatives such as whole wheat bread, brown rice or oats. These options are richer in fiber and nutrients, which have been shown to have protective effects against cancer. Whole grains contain antioxidants and phytochemicals that contribute to reducing inflammation and oxidative stress in the body, thereby lowering cancer risk. Before we move on, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Please support us by dropping your comments in the comment section below. They are using it to produce reactive oxygen species, ROS. ROS are carcinogenic and mutagenic. These radicals, oxygen radicals, damage DNA, RNA, and proteins. They cause the mutations that you see in the nucleus of the tumor cells. After exploring the hidden dangers in everyday foods, let's turn up the heat on another potential cancer culprit, charred meat. While many enjoy the smoky flavor of a well-grilled steak, research suggests that high-temperature cooking methods may come with unexpected risks. According to the National Cancer Institute, grilling meat at high temperatures, especially over an open flame, leads to the formation of carcinogenic compounds such as heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These compounds are formed when meat is cooked at high temperatures or when fat drips onto heated surfaces, creating smoke that adheres to the meat surface. The real concern lies in how our bodies process these compounds. Robert Tereski, an expert in cancer causation, explains that when enzymes in our body metabolize HCAs and PAHs, they create byproducts that can damage DNA, potentially contributing to cancer development. This risk isn't uniform across the population, as genetic factors can influence individual susceptibility to these compounds. Studies have linked the consumption of well-done meat to higher risks of specific cancers. A 2010 review by Vanderbilt University researchers concluded that high intake of well-done meat, particularly those rich in HCAs, may increase the risk of human cancer. However, it's important to note that real-world evidence linking grilled meat consumption to increased cancer risk is inconsistent, with some studies showing correlations while others do not. So now you take that same metabolism and you throw it into a new environment where you have massive amounts of highly processed carbohydrates, minimal amounts of exercise and energy, and you get fat. From the grill to the fryer, let's turn our attention to another popular cooking method that might be increasing your cancer risk. Fried chicken, a beloved comfort food, could be more dangerous than you think. Deep frying introduces harmful compounds into food, including heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These compounds, formed at high temperatures, are linked to cancer risk. Research shows that HCAs can cause DNA damage, potentially contributing to cancer development. The highest concentrations of these compounds are found in well-done cooked meats and charred foods. But it's not just about the cooking method. Frequent consumption of fried foods is associated with increased cardiometabolic risk factors. Studies have shown that eating fried foods more than twice a week was linked to a higher risk of developing multiple health issues, including obesity and hypertension. These conditions are known risk factors for cancer. So what can you do? Healthier chicken preparation methods include baking, grilling, or steaming, which don't involve the high temperatures and oil that create harmful compounds. 
Using spices and herbs to marinate chicken can also reduce the formation of carcinogens when grilling or baking. By making these simple changes, you can still enjoy chicken without the added cancer risk. So that told me right away that uh, the way you kill cancer cells is you deprive them of their fermentable fuels. And because that's what's driving the dysregulated growth. They're, they're dysregulated because the mitochondria are no longer in control of the system. And now they're just growing as long as they have fermentable fuels. From chicken to potatoes, let's examine another crispy culprit in our diet. French fries, a beloved side dish, might be serving up more than just comfort food satisfaction. These golden crispy sticks have caught the attention of researchers for their potential cancer-promoting properties. The concern lies in the cooking process. When starchy foods like potatoes are fried at high temperatures, they form a compound called acrylamide. This chemical reaction occurs during the frying process, as foods and oils undergo changes that can potentially lead to cancer-causing substances. Acrylamide is classified as a potential carcinogen, with studies linking it to an increased risk of several types of cancer. But the problems with French fries don't stop there. They're typically high in calories and low in nutrients, contributing to weight gain and obesity, significant risk factors for various cancers. Moreover, their high fat and sodium content is associated with an increased risk of cardiometabolic diseases. So what can you do to satisfy those cravings for crispy, salty snacks? without the health risks. Consider healthier alternatives like baked sweet potato fries, which offer more nutrients and fiber. Air-popped popcorn provides a low-calorie, high-fiber option that's satisfyingly crunchy. For a protein-packed alternative, try roasted chickpeas. These options can help you enjoy similar textures and flavors without the potential cancer-feeding effects of traditional French fries. The bottom line, the, the underlying theme here is nutritional ketosis prevents chronic diseases. From quick meals to slow building health concerns, let's pour ourselves a glass of truth about a dietary staple many of us consume daily, full fat milk. While it's been a nutritional cornerstone for generations, recent research has cast a shadow over this creamy beverage. The relationship between dairy consumption and cancer risk is complex and often contradictory. Some studies suggest a link between full fat dairy products and increased risks of certain cancers, particularly hormone-sensitive types like premenopausal breast cancer and prostate cancer. The culprit, hormones and growth factors naturally present in milk. Full-fat dairy products contain estrogen and insulin-like growth factors, which may promote the growth of hormone-sensitive cells. This could potentially increase cancer risk in some individuals. Additionally, excessive dairy consumption has been associated with systemic inflammation a known factor in the development of various chronic diseases, including cancer. However, it's crucial to note that the research isn't definitive. As one study points out, some studies link dairy with an increased risk of premenopausal breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colorectal cancer. However, there is a lack of definitive research linking dairy consumption to increased cancer risk. For those concerned about these potential risks, plant-based alternatives like almond, soy, or oat milk offer viable options. These alternatives are generally lower in saturated fats and hormones compared to full-fat dairy, while still providing essential nutrients. So what is it in our Western diet and lifestyle that's allowing our mitochondria to become damaged, leading to dysregulated cell growth? And there's a whole range of things. N minimal exercise, um, uh, massive amounts of highly processed carbohydrate foods in our diet, from crispy fries to quick meals, let's examine another popular food that might be compromising your health. Instant noodles, a staple for busy individuals and college students, have been linked to some concerning health issues. While convenient and budget-friendly, instant noodles come with hidden risks. Research conducted in South Korea, where instant noodle consumption is highest globally, reveals a troubling connection between these quick meals and cardiometabolic syndrome. The study found that frequent consumers of instant noodles, particularly those eating them three or more times per week, showed higher levels of triglycerides, blood pressure, and fasting blood glucose. The culprits behind these health concerns are the high levels of refined carbohydrates, fats, and sodium found in instant noodles. One serving can contain between 600 to 2,700 and 70 mg of sodium, contributing to increased blood pressure. Moreover, the high glycemic index of instant noodles, ranging from 71 to 87, can lead to rapid spikes in blood sugar levels. 
While not directly linked to cancer, these metabolic disturbances create an environment in the body that may increase cancer risk. The study concluded that regular instant noodle consumption might be associated with multiple cardiometabolic risk factors, even before metabolic syndrome fully develops. To protect your health without sacrificing convenience, consider healthier alternatives. Opt for whole grains, vegetables, lean proteins, and homemade soups using low-sodium broths and fresh ingredients. These choices can provide quick, nutritious meals without the long-term health risks associated with instant noodles.